Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I did a video several months ago on an app called Fantastical or Fantastical. I still don't know how to pronounce it. And since then it's been updated with a little bit of cool things and I wanted to do an updated video and try to be uh, sh as short as possible because the other video was kind of long. Uh, so I've opened up with the fact that this is version 2.2.2. Um, so here's the calendar. Uh, Fantastical is the only calendar app that I've ever purchased. Uh, when I purchased it, it was around $2.99. Now I think it's around $9.99. Uh, it's hard for me to decide if I would have purchased it um, at that price, but I'm very glad I have it, so it's up to you if you think, after what this calendar can do, if it's worth the price. Uh, it has several features above what the default calendar can do. Uh, even with the updates to iOS 8, it still has features that are better than the uh, default calendar. So let us dive in. So basically, um, the first great thing about this is that you can have not only a month view and a list view at the bottom, you can also have a week view and a list view at the bottom. Uh, on the default calendar app, you'll see you have much less um, area for a list if you have a whole lot of things going on. Uh, this month view takes up far less space than the default calendar app. In addition, when you have multiple events on any given day, I'm going to just click on some random day, uh, the default cal calendar app only gives you a single dot, uh, and that to let you know that there is something going on on that day. You could have multiple things scheduled for that day, but regardless whether you have one or whether you have five events for that day it is represented by a single brown circle. In this case, I think you can have up to four. I have three dots on today's date on the 14th. It lets me know as I have uh, three events, and each of those dots is color-coded based off of the colors that I had chosen. Uh, this is synced to my Google calendars. Uh, but the great thing is, is that when you do that, you get to see all the color coding. It's great, um, rather than just that single brown marker and you have your choice between week and month and if you pull down just slightly you get a search bar so you can search within your events. One of the updates now is that in the search you can type b-day for example instead of birthday and it gives you birthdays as you can see. Uh, these are you know how Lincoln's Washington so no personal information. I have a bunch of calendars which I've hidden for this presentation so I don't show people's names or something that don't want to be seen. Uh, now if you have scrolled ahead in time, oh there you go, Cannibal Corpse of the TLA. <laughs> um, if you want to go back you just touch the date at the top, it says March 2015 but I'll tap it, it takes me right back to December 14th, 2014. How do you add something? There's that little plus button, which is universal across all calendar events. Click it, you're brought up to this. Now, uh, the thing that Fantastical prides itself on is it uses natural language to schedule events. Um, you can type it, or you can use the microphone, which of course is built into the default calendar app as well, but let's say... Watch the television at 11.30. So what happened? Well, it heard me. Watch the television at 11.30. If you'll notice, um, it set it at Monday, December 15th. First, let me hit add. I was on the 15th when I hit add. And I went back to today's date now that I've done it. But I was on the 15th when I hit add, so it's going to add something to that date. And, it's, and it has watched the television. I said at 11.30, it put 11.30. It's a.m. Now, if I said 11.30 p.m., I would have changed that. But you can just use natural speech, and it knows where to put things. Um, this is Monday, so we'll stick to Monday, now that we have it highlighted. Let's try something else. My television show every Monday at 10 p.m. We'll hit add. So, every Monday, look at that, there's a dot every Monday now, the 22nd, the 29th, the, uh, January 5th, 
my television show from 10 to 10.30 p.m., just as I said. Again, it's natural language. This is something that is not available in the default calendar app. To be able to say something, it, you can uh, schedule in the default calendar app uh, things to repeat every week, every day, every month, however you want, but you can't just speak it naturally like this. And this is great for when I'm on the go and I can just speak it really quickly. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to delete this. To delete, you just slide from right to left, which is becoming sort of a common thing on iOS. I can edit it to edit the details. I'll hit delete. Delete this event only or delete all future events. Well, I'm going to delete all future events. Let me do it again. Tap, 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 something. There we go. So before even hitting add, you can scroll down and hit show details. And here's where you can let's brighten this up a bit. We can set everything else, the home calendar, if it's all day or not, which it is not. So which time is it going to be? You can set reminders. You can have a URL, which will take you to the website that you want. So um, google.com. Let's add it. The Dave, is Dave what I did? It is. So there's Google. There's a link. Takes me to Google. I want to mention, so this says outside events, so here's something else. If you want to add something, that was the name of my calendar, uh, let's say concert at 9 p.m. The default calendar is the green home calendar, that's what I had set, but uh, you can choose, you can change the calendar by going into more settings, but before I even do that, while I'm still here in my initial edit, if you do a forward slash, you can start typing in the calendar that you intended this to be for. So I'm gonna start typing outside, O-U-T, I, mean, I didn't even have to do the whole thing. It now says outside events, it says it down there in the bottom right. And it does say 9 p.m. And this is on a Sunday because that's where I was on the calendar. I'm not paying attention because <laughs> I'm just trying to get through it. Um, it said the exact same thing as recycling, 9 p.m. Oh, what to do? Do I go to the concert or do I take out recycling? Save the world or rock the world? Who knows? Um, but we can, of course, slide across and maybe we want to edit it since we did delete before. There it is, concert. We can choose the location and it'll show up on a map. You also have the option of when you're viewing the map, when you click the map to have it open up in Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze. W-A-Z-E, and I use Waze. I can change all of these other settings. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So let's say you want to move Dave around, just touch and hold it. You get a couple options. You can duplicate it. Let's see what duplicating does. So look, we can duplicate it for another appointment later in the same day at 8 p.m. today, or maybe it's any one of these other days. And as I'm changing it, it's reflecting down here. So you can change it to any one of those things, very cool. Or if you just want to move it, tap move, basically the same thing, where should it move to? So we can actually change it to Monday, now it says Monday, we'll hit move. And now Dave is down here listed as tomorrow, not in today. This is one of the hugest selling points for me, because when I'm on the go, I'm outside, it's hard for me to go in and mess with all the uh, minor adjustments, clicking on it, going to its settings like this is how you normally have to do it on a regular calendar then hit edit uh, and then find um where the generic restaurant starts click on that now i can now i can move it. that's just it's too much hassle when i'm on the go i like to just be able to press and hold move it move to the day that i want move and it's moved that's it piece of cake so we've been looking at um this vertical mode but it also has uh, horizontal mode. There we go. So there's all of my things, and you can see the little red line. That's very much like, uh, let me try to darken this. Does that help any? I don't know. Um, that shows, you know, where your time is, and I think the other calendar has that as well. Now you can move events around. You can touch and hold anything and move it over here if you want. You can resize it. You can get the information when you tap on it. I'll tap and hold, there we go, so we have these two little white dots, so I can click on this dot and pull it down. And you can see the time inside the box updating as well. Whoa, it's flying around. Tap and hold. 
my gosh, I'm moving things around. I'm trying to be fast. Let's go into the settings. So we have multiple calendars. I guess I will try to blur this when I open it up, but here's all of my calendars. And you can put, a, there's a little check next to this one uh, so you can view it or hide it. The app icon badge. This is a huge setting for me. You can have no badge. You can show today's remaining events, what the current date is, the calendar week, or new event invitations. Today's date is the 14th. I have three things scheduled. It's 5 p.m. right now. We have dinner at 6, take up the recycling at 9, and doing some editing at 10. So three events. If I go home, my calendar has a three up there because I have three events remaining. I love this because when I'm doing other things, it just it's just a brief reminder of what I have uh, without having to open up the app. Um, I can change that to the current date. The current date is... why well, I'm already forgetting the 14th. So when I close this, the app should say 14. 13, there we go. It updated to 14th. Very cool. Pip, 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 pip. I do today's remaining events. The Today Widget. Fantastic. So this was a huge new thing. I'm going to go pull it down. Here's how the widget looks by itself. We have the month, and we have all of the events listed underneath. Looks just like the app. It's wonderful. Click on any of these. Let's click on Take Out Recycling. Oops. It takes me to that event, and there's the information. Um, let's dinner at restaurant. Opens. Takes me to restaurant. I think that's fantastic. Now, if this month view is just taking up a little too much, because if you scroll to the top, you only get one of the events. You want to see more of them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the Today widget and turn off calendar. What does that do? It gives you just the particular day and just the list. And you can use these right and left arrows to scroll through each of the days. And it takes up a lot less space. And of course, if you know about the Notification Center, you can slide Fantastical up and down in the order you want. I have Dark Sky, I can move it above it, below that, however you want to do it. Now, if I'm to turn off events, you have to have at least one of these things. So if I turn off events, calendar automatically turns on. So there we go, it took a second update. It's just the calendar without the list of events if you choose to have that. My preferred setting is to just have the event that I have for today. Let's continue on with our settings. Highlight the weekends, and they are highlighted right now, so if you can see subtly, maybe the contrast on this video is not as good, but Saturday and Sunday are a slightly darker gray than the rest. I also have the week set to start on Monday, because that's when it starts for me. Saturday and Sunday I see as their own thing. I don't know why they have a Saturday over here and a Sunday over here for calendars. That just doesn't seem right for me. The, the, the two days of the weekend seem broken apart. Light theme. I like the dark theme much better. I had it on light theme just to, I don't know, I just felt like doing that for this video. But the dark theme doesn't cover everything. It just covers the bottom half. I wish that it was a black calendar with white text. I still am hoping for that. Uh, but, you know, I, I prefer this. But I thought it would look nicer, all white, at least for the video, since I have a white iPhone. Default alerts. So if I want to have an alert set, it will do it automatically by what I wanna what I wanna have there. The default duration is for how long uh, events that I add are going to be. I have them set for thirty minute because I have thirty minute visits with clients, so I can just set it and have that do that automatically. Other settings. Enable reminders. So yeah. If you are using your Reminders app on your phone, uh, this will see it. They can be visible in your calendar. Uh, they can organize the reminders. I don't like reminders on the iPhone, so I don't use it in Fantastical either. Because the reminders in Fantastical are only as good as the reminders built into the iPhone. Calendar week on. So there you go. I started it on Monday. Show calendar weeks. What is that? Well, you know, you have 52 weeks in a year. So if you want, you can have these little numbers right there showing each calendar week. I don't, I, I guess that's cool. I don't need it. 
list. Okay, so right now we had show selected day only. We'll do all events. And we'll turn off show empty days. There we go. So now it's showing everything going on. What's happening today, tomorrow, it says tomorrow, the 1215. Uh, then I don't have anything till 1225. Um, so, but it kind of looks like we have all these things like day after day after day back to back, which is not true. So if you think, if you feel like having all of these things together gives you, you know, anxiety or something, you want to see the days that you don't have anything going on, do show empty days. And it will not do it, apparently. The day ticker will show all empty days. Make happen. Well, that's interesting. Show list all events. Show the end times. So again, we have 10 to 11.59 to 9.30. If we don't want that, turn that off. Now it has just the start time. If you need a little bit more space. I like to see the whole thing. Show event location map. Yep, so that will show it up. Uh, I'm trying to keep some privacy, so I've turned that off. The numeric keyboard. Yep, I like that. Open links in Safari. I have one password installed. Open locations. And there you go. Maps, ways. I don't have Google Maps installed on my phone right now, but if I did, it would show up there. And I guess that about covers it. So that's the new Fantastical in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it wasn't too fast and that I gave proper information at a speedy rate this time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.